Hi guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Match Point Paradox. Around the start of the Border Gavaskar Trophy, we promised you that we'll come back and do these episodes more often. And the cricket calendar is constantly gifting us opportunities to stay at work, not take a break. We've got one more person here, poor man, sitting in Saudi Arabia after two grueling days of a mega auction of the Indian Premier League for the 2025 edition. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this episode. Joining me, Lavanya, is my colleague from The Hindu, Amol Karadkar, who is currently packing up his bags from Saudi Arabia after the two-day auction. How are you doing, Amol? Have you got some rest? Yes, I have managed some rest, but because of today's match point paradox, you and some of the others at the headquarters may end up losing out on dates because I'm pairing my shopping time for doing the podcast. Fair enough. Okay, we'll take anything, any kind of quality time we can spend from you. Gifts, no problem. Uh, Amol, let's dive straight into it because I know you have a flight to catch very, very soon. Even though you look pretty relaxed, I don't know, I wouldn't be doing a podcast one hour before I had to check out if I were you. Uh, But there's been a lot to unpack, isn't it? Of course, the fine details of the squads and everything, every one of you already knows how the squads look. So let's really look at some of the larger talking points, right? That's come up from this uh, two-day auction. One of them, of course, being the role of that right-to-match option, the tweaked rule of the right-to-match option, which has come back in a new sort of an avatar this time. Uh, Amol, you were there. For us, it was frustrating because of the amount of time some of these bids took and just how you had a final bid and then you had somebody else coming in to bid again. Can you take us through what the overall reception of this tweaked rule was like, maybe from the owners and the coaches and stuff? In general, the pace of the auction was slower than earlier this time around. Mm -hmm. The RTM uh, stoppages made it even uh, uh, slower. So uh, possibly you can sync it uh, along with the pace of cricket matches these days, especially when either India or the IPL is involved. Okay, so <laughs> that way we are all on the same page. But uh, the coming to the RTM card, yes, it did make for a very interesting choice. But uh, as Daniel Vittori uh, told us during one of the media interactions, that there has to be a short clock on it, he said. Yeah. Okay, and it's it doesn't only apply to uh, the... Uh, RTM bid. My simple point is whenever someone asks for a pause, hmm. the short clock should start and no one should be given more than 15 seconds. Yeah, It's yeah. like the DRS reference, right? Because otherwise, uh, you end up giving uh, too many guys uh, unnecessary time and uh, the uh, then the whole uh, objective of making an IPL auction interesting hmm. goes for a toss. Strategically, uh, it did make uh, a huge impact. I am sure some of our uh, read listeners or uh, viewers right now would have hopefully read the story. 14 times was RTM card raised and only 8 of those instances wherein we saw the original franchise actually ending up matching the uh, escalated price. Hmm. Right. Hmm. So that way it made sense. The players were in a win-win situation. Because uh, from the last bid, it it could have gone anywhere. We saw a Sai Kishore going from 2 crore to 6 crore. We saw Jitesh Sharma going from 7 to 11. We saw Rishabh Pan going from 20.75 20, to 27. Yeah. Okay. Had it not been the case, uh, would they have fetched uh, the final price tag? As of now, no. Right. But here again, the the other way to look at it is because there was RTM, the others knew it may have been employed, so they stopped earlier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like uh, the classic case of RTM and confusion, or uh, the uh, not confusion, the temptation, the intricacies of RTM was when that Sam Karan and Marco Jansen, Sam Karan came up first, hmm. and since uh, everyone else stopped at two point four. The Punjab Kings table with uh, too many heads who matter around suddenly got into a hurdle. Yeah. Some of them were tempted that, okay, Sastave Mil Rai, so let's pouch on to him. Okay. Yeah. But that's where the head coach and the analyst were crystal clear. We need Jansen, we are going for him. So they let go of him. 
but someone else may have got sam karan sam karan the... back yeah punjab in a previous edition of their support staff would have yeah yes. <laughs> so here they were crystal clear their priority in that set was marco jansen they were not going to hold themselves back for him hmm. and uh, they let go of sam karan but that rtm did come in to picture it led to uh, even a bigger pause and uh, the desks were overstretched uh, possibly some of the viewers uh, uh, again went on to watching something else for a while yeah. but that's okay right fair enough it was a lot of background viewing i thought if you're not covering it right it's just running in the background because it just seems to be going on and on which is what a lot of our viewers our readers have told us over the last two days as well all right so i told you we wouldn't go into the teams but we have to potentially discuss some of these big buys right we've seen a lot of money go in for credible indians some good indian players now whether that money is worth it or not that's another conversation we can have but we've seen rishabh pant shreyas iyer kl rahul ended up going for a little less than what we would have expected him to go venkatesh iyer which was a very contentious buy over the last couple of days uh, what do you just make of that because we saw overseas players sometimes going up for the most expensive bid when chris morris was there when ben stokes was there sam karan pat cummins now seeing indians climb up that ladder and take that spot again what is that like potentially for the league okay most of the names that you mentioned came up in mini auction let's not yeah. forget that yeah okay now number 2 uh, in most of the uh, previous auction okay since 2011 we haven't had uh, so many prolific indian uh, players in the auction Mm-hmm. it's like yeah. what uh, i had said before the auction that this will be the grandest auction in that regard yeah okay okay it's like ipl has raised in stature these players have become household names and iconic figures for uh, gen z that thrives only on digital media yeah right for them ipl be all and end all when it comes to cricket consumption mm. so for so for that generation rishabh pant being in the auction is almost as big as if not more than not just mahendra singh dhoni sachin tendulkar being in an ipl auction in 2008 hmm okay. did sachin tendulkar ever enter the ipl auction no rishabh pant entered the ipl auction after a decade when yeah. he has become the rishabh pant yeah yeah so the figures were bound to escalate this was the first time ever that of defending ipl champion captain captain right was in an ipl auction right so shreyas iyer was bound to go for okay 25 crore barrier whether that would be breached or not it depended on the house but once it's like uh, sanjeev going also lucknow mm-hmm. once shreyas iyer had had the highest bid ever okay the escalated bid for rtm he just ensured that he placed one slab above uh, shreyas's figure yeah so there was no way for uh, delhi to match delhi. it simple as that no right right got it now when we talk about these kind of amounts being spent for a player right and you know why i'm getting here for a minute um, these are going to be investments for say 3 years now where they're going to pump this amount of money on these player contracts when you look at somebody like say a web of suryavanshi at the age of 13 getting picked by rajasthan royals is this a good return for investment i'm not looking at his age or his where he's standing should he be should he be participating should 13 year olds be in an auction all that we'll discuss later but just in terms of that money will rajasthan royals manage to get a return on investment there because if they do spend 3 years on him and then he ends up you know working on his skills and becoming this prolific cricketer and then ends up going to some other team isn't that one crore down the drain since the digital media is already been going berserk over webov suryavanshi for almost 24 hours now i think rajasthan royals have already got their worth <laughs> okay <laughs> jokes apart uh, let's not get into the kids age yeah there yeah. is a lot of uh, confusion controversy or possible controversy in store with regard to his age okay but the fact of the matter is he played in under 19 performed against australia under 19 yes so and ipl has got nothing to do with anyone's age absolutely there is an age old saying especially in mumbai cricket that if you are confused uh, or if you are doubtful about anyone's age just try him out in one age category higher if he or she performs over there that means the player is excellent 
the matter is put to bed. Same goes for Vaibhav Suryavanshi when it comes to IPL. IPL doesn't have an age barrier. Okay. The other point that you said, whether a player's age uh, should be uh, considered before his enrollment into the IPL auction roster, that's a wider point that can be dis- discussed later. Mm-hmm. For now, he is good enough for them to be a part of their 25 player setup for the IPL. And looking at the composition of squads this time around, there is a possibility that if a team struggles, almost everyone will end up getting at least one game, if not more. Right. Okay. Not too many teams have been able to fill up their roster of 25 players. So, in that regard, if he is promising, if there is an investment, and uh, look at what Rajasthan Royals have done with uh, Rashad as well. Yeah. They know how to, how to nurture talent. They have a system in place. So, unless or until something goes wrong, or the player changes his approach, uh, they have the wherewithal to nurture a talent. And that is what they're investing in. They're looking at possibly a five-year or a 10-year program, right? Mm -hmm. For him. If if it starts off on a good note, it doesn't matter whether he gets a game or not, first off. But if they uh, follow his training regime, if they evaluate, if they feel that ye lambi ka hoda ban sakta hai, then they'll keep investing in him. Otherwise, there is a there is always an option to release anyone after the first year, no? Right, right. All right. So that's one aspect of it. The other aspect, and that involves Rajasthan Royals again, where you see some of these players, like for example, Jofra Archer, right? We've seen him not be around for a while. He's had constant injury um, breakages in his career in the last five years, at least. 2020 was the last time we saw him completely finish one IPL season. How does he command, when he commands rather, not how does he command, we know what what the pedigree is, so he definitely is worth that price tag. But when you see the kind of problems he could potentially bring with him, that question mark around availability, question mark around fitness, when you're still going to be a little careful with him, how do you, how how is that choice made rather? That's what I'm trying to understand. Is Has the team like factored that in? Was that discussed at all after the auction? Even before the auction. If you remember, Jopra yeah. Arthur wasn't shortlisted. So, all those 1500 players, the, how does the option operate? A player is given a choice to register himself, right? Mm-hmm. Then that list is sent to the franchises. They are told, you take the name and give us players uh, that you are interested in. Jofra Archer wasn't shortlisted first up. He was added at the last minute. 24 hours prior to the auction was Jofra Archer added. That's because the franchises sought clarity over Jofra Archer's availability. Right. So once the England and Wales Cricket Board assured the BCCI that for uh, he will be fit and he will not be held back for medical reasons. Mm. Okay. Then it was clear that yes, unless and until he breaks down from now till the start of IPL or during the IPL, he is going to be available for two months. So they can have him as a primary member of their 11, the teams were bound to go big on him and that's what happened. And uh, uh, on a lighter note, Jofra Archer, Trent Bolt, Rajasthan Royals, Mumbai Indian. I think there is some unwritten understanding. (laughs) Fair enough. It's like match the pairs uh, after (laughs) every two seasons. In terms of Arjun coming back and being taken in by uh, Mumbai Indians again, that too in the second time, like he went unsold in the first shot and then they brought him back and took him in again. What do you sort of see for Arjun in Mumbai Indians? Because we don't really see him regularly come in and go out. He had a few opportunities and then stepped back out again. Look at the kind of, st- the Mumbai Indians starting 11, if we have to make one predicted 11 from here, Arjun doesn't figure in it. And if everyone's fit, he's very unlikely to get a game. So how is he growing in this setup, potentially, is that something that this team really needs to look at? See, a lot of teams also go for loyalty factor. A lot of teams also go for comfort level. Okay, forget about the surname, the nepotism angle. It's like, uh, uh, are you sure Anukul Roy will be uh, drafted into the eleven? Yeah, at least one. Right. Look right. at look at how how KKR have gone about the whole auction. Right. CSK to an extent. Right. Mm-hmm. KKR virtually went for everyone who was a part of their roster. 
right so in that regard it's okay it's understandable and it's not that mumbai indians have had a 18 member squad so they will struggle with the inclusion of one player hmm. he is their backup player okay he did get three games in the season right yeah yeah and uh, we have seen now having uh, had 18 auctions and 17 seasons so far all of us should realize that a player's uh, pedigree in domestic cricket or other forms of competitive cricket has no bearing in so many ways over uh, his auction drafting otherwise we wouldn't have seen a prithvi shaw or shardul thakur or mayank agarwal remaining unsold right yeah 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 fair enough that's one aspect of the conversation here isn't it because you see domestic cricket of course at one point was the audition plate for people to come and say okay i am this consistent scouts are coming and sitting in these uh, tournaments and then we get to go but now there's this mushrooming of state leagues as well we saw the delhi t20 was there up's got a t20 league tnpl is going on there was this maharaja t20 maharashtra has got something so how much is this I don't know if I asked you this or if I asked somebody else this in our live stream yesterday. Is this like a closing of the loop in a lot of senses? Because the point of an IPL was to have these feeder systems, right? To have more opportunities so people can keep pushing players into that ecosystem to get that opportunity, to get that commercial um, sort of windfall as well. In a lot of these cases, clearly we see that it is a windfall. So, do you think that loop has been closed finally? Eighteen years, right before the eighteenth season. kind of kind of and it just takes me back to a conversation i had with lalit modi i know uh, the name sounds controversial in today's day and age but 2009 just before the first champions league t20 was launched no that launch press conference a day before the tournament began i had asked him uh, do you think this will make the mushtaq ali redundant because if you are saying Because Mustaq Ali, two thousand seven, they started it off in a hurry. It wasn't named Mustaq Ali; it was named Interstate T Twenty. Ah, yeah. Two thousand eight, there was no window for it. After announcing that it will be named after Mustaq Ali, oh okay. And two thousand nine, it came back. So I had asked uh, Lalit Modi. So he just gave me some reply. But back in those days, the discussion was whether this will uh, make domestic cricket redundant. That had set in back then. Hmm. now we are saying whether the loop is complete okay that, that's how far we have traveled and yeah. uh, mind you uh, franchises were disappointed with the uh, auction being held at right at the start of mushtaq ali trophy because state leagues is the first step okay then there are simulation trials that's true hmm. but whether a player can deliver at a higher level under pressure in a match situation that they gauge from mushtaq ali more than the state league Right. So, if we would have seen the auction as planned around December fifteenth, we would have possibly seen more domestic eight-figure names than what what we eventually saw. The Priyansh Aryas and the Gurjapni Singhs would have had company, and they wouldn't have been rarities. Right, right. Ah, uh, from the pile that has ended up unsold, right? Are you surprised by any of the names? I know we discussed Prithvi Shaw, we discussed Shardul, but anybody else stands out for you as a surprise who didn't get picked? Ah, uh, beyond that, uh, see some of the domestic names, but that's understandable. It's like because the franchise that spent so much on uh, getting the marquee players, as in, mm. it's like I just calculated twenty one ten crore plus tag. that's like in 2022 at the full auction there were 11 yeah 10 crore plus that yeah okay so once you are spending so big on the main players on day 1 day 2 becomes very difficult uh, for a player to fetch a higher price tag or for a player with higher base price to actually get get a, a team that's yeah. where shardul thakur uh, shardul thakur uh, lost out on exactly right? that's where ajinkya rane was lucky That's where DDP also DDP they waited 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 they ensured that everyone no one else could bid for him no mm. when they bid for him that's right, right. Mm. that's right so, fair now yeah so, so we'll... that way beyond that I doubt uh, some of see there are many domestic names uh, un, in the uncapped category that I thought would have gone or should have gone but that's okay we'll list them and put it out later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's still a lot of time to have these conversations. There's, of course, some opportunity for these guys also. If there is 
god forbid an injury issue somewhere there is an opportunity for some of them to even find takers potentially before that season so this conversation will keep going um final couple of questions to you amol one is we always look at country share right in terms of the number of cricketers from these registered countries that have really managed to go and the first couple of countries we look at is of course england australia south africa west indies sri lanka all these places i specifically want to ask you about west indies because there was a time and this is a type cast i know it is like at least when 2007 2008 we used to assume okay west indies players nice big hitters muscular players they played that brand of t20 right that fast pace fast scoring six hitting kind of cricket now of course the world has changed in 17 seasons everyone's learned that power hitting that it's a skill that now people are consciously working on and the west indian seem to have just fallen back a little bit to see not many of them go in this auction is that a worrying sign now another worrying sign they already have plenty of uh, multiple banners standing in terms of problems within their setup but is this another sign of just how bad things have gone for them this is a reality check uh, in one way about how one dimensional cricket cannot last for a real long time yeah that's the way i look at it like you said they were the trend setter but once everyone else has spot up and they have remained where they are they yeah. need to reinvent themselves so mm-hmm. if you look at it the west indies t20 team isn't doing great there is not too much of demand from other markets for them primarily see ultimately west indian pre- players may end up playing everywhere else in the world but if they don't get the money from indian premier league yeah. then they can't really take the west indies board heads on right right, right. so uh, like you said this could well lead to another uh, further turmoil in west indies cricket in the years to come or hopefully this will be a wake up call for call for the young west indies cricketer that if you strive to be uh, a yashasvi jaiswal more than a rohman pawel it may hold you in a better stead hmm. down the line right uh, the other element of this being when we just look at the kind of decisions that have been taken right when we look at auction strategies each year we've seen teams be a little more data driven in terms of the players they're bringing in of course yes there's reputation there's that family bonding which kkr csk and mi sort of are champions and flag bearers of but there are very data driven decisions there are more people now at the table there's more uh, information and numbers being passed around on that basis how would you evaluate this auction because we're still seeing there are still teams that don't have some clear cut answers to very identified problems heading into the auction rcb for example i still have no idea who their captain is going to be are they going to fall back on virat what's happening with the bo- like the bowling the backups that uh, rajasthan might potentially need if there are injuries lsg doesn't have that opener along with uh, pant who's who who do they have at least like an established one which was one of their sort of decided priorities ahead of the auction so what do you make of that maybe just the strategies of the teams going in how would you overall rate it see uh a lot of us some of us in there were only four journalists uh, who traveled from india I had a long discussion with one of them about how sunrisers have uh, he was helbent on saying they have messed it up royally so they can't go for anyone they want on day 2 okay yeah. but o- over the two day proceedings every franchise has, has had a passage hmm. wherein they are forced to sit quiet yeah okay. and that's because of the uh, dynamics involved in auction that when you go for someone when you either get him at uh, a price that way higher than you had planned for or when you have to let go of someone you mm-hmm. have to wait and figure out your plan b plan c plan d in a matter of minutes right and that's why we see it's like so okay uh, remember what we had discussed in 2022 about gujarat titans that they are the worst combination yeah yeah right? i remember that yeah so, so right now matthew bridski is an opening batter i'm not saying he will open for lucknow okay but, but he's if there they stick to him right. and mm-hmm. if he comes good you and i will be discussing how it was a master stroke yeah that's true right mm-hmm. uh, so uh, the primary objective of an auction is to have a combination ready but if auction was to decide ipl champion we wouldn't have uh, watched those two months of cricket and we would have stuck with the auction every year that's true that's true that's fair enough i that's think that's <laughs> an ideal parting note <laughs> exactly <laughs> i was just going to say there's no better way to end this podcast than that 
uh, Amol's of course filed a number of stories for us from Saudi, including what this auction could mean for Saudi Arabia cricket. So do go and check that out on our website. We'll get that uh, put up shortly. And also because he mentioned Lalit Modi, we were in Rajasthan recently for one of our conclaves and Lalit Modi was the front and centre of the cricket panel that was held there where he, they spoke about how he's taught Rajasthan cricket to monetize themselves. So that's well worth a listen as well if you're heading out of this podcast. Thanks for joining us, guys. Amol will, of course, f- uh, join us for another cricket podcast once he's back on Indian shows. Amol, I hope you catch your flight on time and that we haven't delayed you too much. Thank you so much for your coverage from Jeddah and we'll see you when you're back in India. Thanks a lot. Allah Hafiz. <laughs> Allah Hafiz. <laughs> Thanks, Amol. Take care. So that was it for this edition of Matchpoint Paradox. If you like this episode, please leave us a rating on Spotify so we know that you did enjoy this. If you'd like to see any other types of content, if you'd like to see us speak to players, or if there are any suggestions that you have for this podcast, you can drop that as well. You can find us on our social media platforms at Sportstar Web. Or you can drop us an email. Um, I will leave the email account in the show notes of this episode. Thank you so much for listening once again. And until another episode, it's goodbye from all of us here at Sportstar.